Hey, what's up, everybody? Before we even get into the video, big shout out to HotDJGear.com. They're the ones who make this shirt that's been popping up in videos and pictures all summer. Now, they also make this shirt right here. Keep vinyl alive, support your local record store. You may have seen me wearing that shirt too in a couple videos. Now, we've got a problem as DJs right now. A lot of us love lighting, but the problem is a lot of the lighting we're getting into looks awesome with fog. However, we can't use fog. What are you going to do? We've got to come up with solutions. How are we going to make our banquet facilities and our halls and our dance floors look awesome without the use of fog? Well, I've learned a few things at these trade shows, and I'm going to pass them on to you. This is the first video of many, so uh, here, check it out. What you're looking at right now is a rather uninteresting angle of the dungeon. Now, if you haven't figured it out already, the dungeon is actually the basement of a house, and it's a finished basement. Now, what you see right here, sticking up in the middle of everything, right in the way, it's actually a steel pole covered in cedar. It's part of the support system of the house. And then above that, right here, you see another brown cedar-covered something. That's an I-beam covered in cedar. Now, Jay Brannon from Pioneer and Brian Dowdle, an American DJ, have put ideas in my head. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make that pole look a little more interesting. How's that for a little more interesting? This is what they call uplighting or architectural lighting. Basically, all I've done is I've taken a par can and I've put it on the floor and shot it up the base of the column to make something ugly beautiful. Now imagine if I had multiple columns down here to light up. That would look pretty cool. This room is not completely dark. There's dim lighting on, probably about the same amount of lighting you'd have in your average wedding banquet hall after they bring the lights down a bit. You can still maneuver just fine, and we're still seeing a lot of color on that pole. Now again, that pole's dark brown. Imagine if that pole was a beautiful white Greek column, and imagine if you had several of them. How cool would that look? Now before we have a closer look at this par can and unplug it, let me show you something. No heat on the outside canister. If I touch the diodes themselves, it's a little warm, but quite frankly, little kids wash their hands in warmer water than this. So let's go ahead and unplug this. Realize that no one's going to burn themselves on this. This is going to be safe. This is not going to cause any fires. This is what you need to use, LED. Now, I suppose you could use halogen, but then you're going to risk the chance of someone hurting themselves or possibly a fire. Not only that, but if you're using several lights, you're going to be using a lot of power. So LED with its low power consumption and ultra low heat is the perfect thing to use for uplighting. Now look, now I couldn't figure this out for a while because sometimes I'm slow, but notice this light has two brackets. Like what the heck are the two brackets for? Well, they're for setting the light on the floor. Just like that. And you can position it any way you want. Now here's a little closer look at the light we just used to light the column up. This is the 64B LED Pro from American DJ. These are not new lights. I've had these since January but I really like these lights. They also make a 64S, which is a silver can. This one's the B, this is black. Now here are the things I like. You got the 10 millimeter diodes inside, which are nice and bright, especially for a 64 can. And then on the back, just like all the other American DJ lights that are coming out right now, you've got the digital display panel instead of dip switches. Now why is this cool? Well, you can set your color fades. I think you've got the options 0 through 99 to set how fast your color fades go. You could do color adjustments, master slave, all kinds of stuff without DMX, which is going to be key in some places where you're doing uplighting. You may not have enough DMX cable. You may not have the option to run a DMX cable. Maybe you're going past doorways and things. You're going to have to do something else. So here, this digital display is going to give you a lot more options than a standard dip switch par can. I've got a lot of lights on order. We're going to call this the LED Uplighting Project. I'm going to do a lot of videos on this. I'm going to learn about it as I go. If you have any questions, if you have any answers, please feel free to let me know. I'm new at this, but I'm thinking it's a great concept, and I'm thinking we can all make a little money with it. Practice and enjoy.